In the next 90 seconds, we will fundamentally analyze Rio Tinto PLC, which is the global diversified miner. The company's net margin over the past 10 years has been in the double digits. As of 2023, the company's net margin is at 18.61. What this 18.61% means is if the company made $100 in sales, by the time it paid for all its costs and expenses, taxes, interest on its debt obligations, the company had $18.61 left as pure profit. Additionally, we can see that the company's return on invested capital, which gives us an idea of how efficient and good the management is at allocating the company's capital. We can see that the company's return on invested capital has also been in the double digits for the most part of the past 10 years. Most recently, the company's return on invested capital has been 17.39%. Additionally, the company's return on asset and return on equity has been greater than 10% over the past five years. Next, looking at the interest coverage, which gives us an idea of how many times can the company pay off its interest using its income in that year. So for the year 2023, the company could pay off its interest 8.04 times using its income for the year 2023. In other words, the higher this number, the better off it is, as it tells us that the company is a going concern. Now let's look at the financial health of Rio Tinto. For the latest quarter, the current ratio is at 1.70. Ideally, we want this ratio to be greater than 1.0. Next, looking at the debt to equity ratio for the latest quarter, the company's debt to equity was at 0.24. Ideally, we want to see the company's debt to equity ratio to be less than one. It's even better if it's less than 0.5. So overall, we can see that the company is financially healthy. It has enough assets on its balance sheet to survive for the next 12 months and beyond. Now let's try to find the intrinsic value of this company. For that, we'll have to go to the company's financials, looking at the cash flow statement. Let's focus on the free cash flow. For the year 2023, the company's free cash flow was $8.07 billion. To find the intrinsic value, let's use the zero growth free cash flow model since we can easily compute it in our heads. And let's use the discount rate of 10%. So for that, we'll simply divide 8.07 divided by 10%, which gives us about $80 billion. Now on top of this $80 billion, let's add the company's book value. Book value is what we get when we subtract the total liabilities from the company's total assets. In other words, it is shareholders' equity. So looking at the balance sheet, we can see that the company's total equity is about $56 billion. Now, if we add the $80 billion that we got from the company's free cash flows intrinsic value, plus the $50 billion that we got from the balance sheet, we can see that the total comes to about $130 billion. And if we compare that $130 billion to the company's market cap, which is about $104 billion, we can see that the company is currently undervalued compared to the intrinsic value. In other words, the company's current market cap is about $30 billion less than what the intrinsic value is.